Who's a good domestic wolf? You? Yeah. He's a pretty dog, right? Yeah, he really is. And where I come from, people think we're pretty different from animals. Wait, really? We're just kind of detached from it, you know? Well, I mean, you're the anthropologist. You should probably tell them why they're wrong. Do you want to help me tell them why? Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. All right, let's do it. In our modern world, it's easy to separate ourselves from the rest of the animal kingdom. With our bipedal posture, our ability to think and speak, and our penchant for manipulating our environments around us with tools, it's kind of easy to see ourselves on a different plane. In my opinion, we really aren't that different though. We are multi-celled organisms in the kingdom Animalia. We are vertebrates that have body hair and lactate to feed our young. We belong to the order primates, as we live in complex social groups and have grasping hands. Specifically, we descend from dry-nosed old world monkeys and currently classify ourselves as great apes, or hominids. And of the living hominids, however, we're the only surviving members of the genus Homo. Man. When we view ourselves through a taxonomic lens such as this, we are only one category away from what most humans would call animal. However, as an ethnocynologist and science communicator, I found the best way to explain our place as a species is not lecturing about primatology, but curiously exploring the relationship between humans and our favorite domestic predators. Dogs. Similar to primates, wolves also are highly intelligent social mammals that work together to achieve goals. They live in mostly monogamous and nuclear family structures, and they understand vocal and body languages. And much like our Ice Age human ancestors, wolves are both opportunistic scavengers and cunning hunters. These similarities meant that our ancestors frequently crossed paths with canids while hunting reindeer on the Eurasian taiga. When faced with the challenge of survival in a harsh world now populated by invasive, fire-wielding apes, it seems unnatural that such formidable animals learn not only to coexist, but to live symbiotically. But this partnership was made possible due to our shared taste for grazing ungulates, our complex language capabilities, and the sophisticated social structures easily understood by both species. Scientifically, the ancient wolves who adapted to life among humans are the dogs we know today. So how different are we from other species? Well, despite the 60 to 70 million years since we last shared a common ancestor, humans and wolves are only one tiny taxonomic branch away from each other on the tree of life. More like a twig. And while our proclivity for pyrotechnics and our addiction to technology might separate us in a few semiotic ways, there is no hiding the fact that other species still flourish on the earth today without the use of bipedalism or tools. We're not that special. We just have the ability to think so.